What's up guys, Shane here, Fugitive 3D Printing, and today we're checking out the February 2018 MakerBox. Welcome back. So we are at box number two. So this is February for 2018. I love printing these boxes. It brings so many new things, so many new things for me to try, to test out, and learn. The biggest thing from this is I learned so much about different filaments that are out there. Even though I might never use them, it's a good way to challenge myself to get decent prints using different materials. So let's see what came in this month. First up, they tell you they have a Facebook group. You can receive a free maker box by doing the affiliate program, which I'll tell you guys about a little bit later. What should you print? They do have some ideas in a collection on Thingiverse. There is a discount code, so you go to extrudingknowledge.com forward slash codes, and then you can type in the different codes for the different filaments for this month, and that way, or there's one code here, and that gives you the discount codes for all these different roles if you wanna purchase some, how to earn a free maker box, the what you print the community. So basically, it's two sides, just printed a little bit differently. We're curious about the filament, but Harbio, gummy bears, yummy. That will fuel everything we need that comes to 3D printing. Okay, so up first we have Architectural Clay by Treed and it is kind of this light brown kind of color. All right, the hot end temperature, 220 to 240C. Bed temperature is 85 to 115Z, pretty high. Speed, 60 to 70 millimeters a second. Info, filament mixed with clay powder for prints with an excellent surface finish. So it's pretty firm, it prints fast, but it prints hot. So this should be pretty interesting on how to print with. I printed with one clay one before from Form Futra. It was not that great, I didn't like it, so hopefully this treed filament comes out a little bit better. All right, we have a new company. So this is ABSPA from Dr. 3D Filament. I've never heard of these guys before, and I've never had a filament from them before. And it is in this type of natural kind of color, almost looks like a dirty white, kind of dirty cream color. All right, now the print settings, it is hot end temperature, 255 to 265. Stop everybody right there. You need a all metal hot end in order to print this. If you print this with a PTFE lined throat, it will most likely melt. So please keep that in mind. You're gonna need all metal hot end to print this filament. The bed temperature, 100 110 C. Speed, 30 to 40 millimeters a second. So it's gonna take a long time to print this, so definitely you're gonna kill the PTFE lining in your throat if you have a printer like that. So pick up a Micro Swiss, something like that, all metal hot end or an E3D and get that going. The info, a blend of polymide nylon and ABS for strong functional prints. The manufacturer advises baking 24 hours at 40C for best quality. But yeah, so all metal hot end is absolutely required for this because of the throat, the PTFE lining in there. Thankfully, I have the FT5 and now the CR10S. Both have all metal hot ends. So I don't need to worry about it. I can print this on either one of those, but probably on the FT5 because it's an ABS composite. So you're gonna need to also have your printer enclosed. So again, learning a lot, how to print these things, challenge yourself, you'll get it there. All right, now we have GF30-PP from Reinforced Materials, or X-Strand. I'm not sure which one of those it is, but it looks like this matte colored black. Uh, almost looks like a carbon fiber infused filament. Let's see, the hot end temperature, 220 to 280, whew, big spread. Bed temperature, 80 to 110 C. Speed, 30 to 100 millimeters a second. Info, okay, it's a glass filled polypipeline from Owens Corning. Very stiff and strong for functional prototyping and tooling requires a hotter nozzle, PET packing tape on the bed. Interesting. So you can contact them if you have any issues or if you need any more information from it. But a packing tape or PET, very interesting on how they want to do this and they want to print that on. Maybe because it might take it off. I've never printed anything like that before, so maybe we'll give it a shot and see what happens. All right, so we have a nice heavy bag from Protopasta, and this is their composite copper. Metal filaments are super fun. I really like printing with them. They have such an awesome finish, and then you can actually finish them when you're done. But let's talk about the settings. So it's hot in temperature, 185 to 215 C, so almost like a wood filament a range for this. The bed temperature, room temperature to 60 C, speed 30 70 more second, and the info is in HTPLA mixed with copper powder, sand and polish for a metallic luster. 1.75 denser than standard PLA for a more real feel. 
and it is quite heavier. And the nice thing that MakerBox does is they measure this by the length and not the actual weight for the samples. All of these samples are 16 meters long instead of being like a normal sample for most manufacturers, which is 50 grams. 50 grams would come out to be about 10 meters in most filaments, but in this like this uh, copper, or any of the metal filled ones, way less than that, simply because it weighs so much. Again, it's almost twice as dense as standard PLA, you know, so if you take each of the spools, that's quite a difference. So this should be really, really fun to print with and see how it turns out. This whole box seems to be exotics. So remember, almost everything in this box requires an all metal hot end or a hardened nozzle. I have all my hardened nozzles from Micro Swiss. They're an excellent company. They've supported me in the past. I've been buying their, their nozzles on my own for you know two years now and I've never yet had to replace one. Every new machine pretty much automatically gets one. So make sure you guys go down below the video description and check out, go into their website. Not a field link, nothing like that, but it's who I recommend. And an E3D all metal hot end, of course, if you're gonna print anything high temperature, or at least go ahead and buy their all metal throat and throw it in your clone or something like that. You can get away with that, about $15 purchase. And the last thing is the spool that I'm gonna use. So this is a redesign from a previous model that I used. And I'll talk a little bit more later because at the time of I'm filming this right now, I don't remember the guy's name and I want to quote that. So I gave some suggestions in my video what to do uh, to make up the tolerance a little bit more, make this a little more printable on a standard 200 by 200 millimeter bed and to make the center ring here where the film is held a little bit larger because all the filament kind of floated a little too much on there, at least all the samples that I received. So this is going to be what we test out this month and if you want to try this one out, down below in the description, there will be a link to the Thingiverse file for this one. So let's roll some time lapses, get these things printed, and see how they turn out. All right, guys, and we're back. So I will say, this was a quite the difficult box to print, except for the ABS. I don't know why, it just took me a little bit of time to get these other ones dialed in properly and printing the way I wanted them to. They didn't turn out perfect, but they're really, really close, and I did learn a lot about printing with these different ones. First thing is actually listen to the instructions that come on the bags, because when they tell you to do something, it's pretty close to right most of the time. There's been a few times where it hasn't been, but I should have learned, and we'll talk about that one, because I have a pretty epic uh, failure here. All right, so first up, let's talk about here the spool. And this came out great and it worked out much better. Uh, I printed the original design a few months ago and tested that out. And I had some suggestions. The main one being the spool itself needed to be decreased in its diameter. It was too wide for a 200 by 200 millimeter bed, which is the greatest majority of 3D printers out there have a 200 by 200 millimeter bed. So he brought that down a little bit. And then the diameter right here, so this ring is now larger a little bit in order to fit the spool, or actually say in order to fit the filament. Let me show you what that looks like. I'll take the leftover of the ABS that I have, it just turns and pops off. I'm gonna place it on there. So you see, it looks really good, and I would say every uh, roll of filament varies by about a centimeter in its actual diameter. It's pretty close though, but I mean a centimeter enough, you know, and once you put the other front back on here, and it fits on there really well, it's not too loose. If I go this way, you can't really hear it a lot this way, but back and forth, it's, it fits really nice. So I highly, this is probably probably my most highly recommended spool for the MakerBox as it fits this one perfectly. I will use this again next month in order to see if it works, if it just for happened to work for these rolls. We'll see how it does next month and we'll go from there. But this was uh, printed in the Kodak PLA Plus, so it's super strong. Uh, it really doesn't need to be for a spool, for a spool but you know, why not? Uh, I like it. Okay, before we look closely at the actual prints, let's take a look at the results from, this is the GF30PP from X-Strand, and this is my pretty epic failure here. So, first layer went down, I was like, great, it looks awesome, I'm gonna walk away. Came down two hours later, and I was greeted to this nest. It didn't adhere at all to each other, or if it did, it was poorly adhered. So, I was like, okay, well here on the bag it says, PET or packing tape on the bed. So I whipped out my super duper cheap packing tape, put that on the bed, and it freaking stuck and it stayed the entire print. I was so mad when that happened, but back of the print, it is stuck on there and is not coming off. I think if I would have used uh, a more expensive or at least a thicker 
uh, gauge, I don't even know if that's a gauge, either way, a thicker packing tape, like a real thick clear packing tape, this might have peeled off more easily, but this stuff is crazy cheap from we were in China and they used it to pack out our boxes and they gave me a couple extra rolls to have around to pack other boxes with. And this was not a good idea. So I definitely should have used something thicker and that probably would have helped out quite a bit, but that is stuck on there and it will stay on there. And actually you can stick it to pretty much anything now because the sticky side was down. Uh, but either way, let's uh, get a closer look at the prints and how they turned out. Okay, so here we have archeological clay from Treed. And this was an interesting filament. I tried printing this outside of an enclosure. Uh, it didn't work at all. I had to put it inside of an enclosure in order to keep it from splitting, but yet it's still split inside the enclosure. I think maybe if I would have went with a hotter temperature inside the enclosure, it would have stuck better. Oh, like the layers would have adhered better, but uh, that's okay. But it has a nice finish to it. Bottom layers, it all stayed on. Oh, I didn't take the support out of this. I mean, the support comes off super easy. I mean, you see, it's all pretty much gone. A little bit left in there. A little bit stringy in there. Uh, I try to reduce most of that, but the first layer went down well. Around here, it printed okay on these overhangs. Or I should say overhangs, but the, the grade of the overhang there, technically it's an overhang. It printed out fairly well, but there's definitely some issues there. I don't think it's really not a filament made to work well over overhangs, but over support, it worked out well. And I would probably put this up by like, 0 0.01 more on the extrusion multiplier. It's it's pretty close to dialed in, but it's just under extruded just a little bit, I think. Uh, you guys might think differently, but I think I would up at least by 0 0.01 just to help out a little bit more uh, get that filled in. But yeah, it looked really nice. I think sanding this down would actually look really, really nice and like doing a finish on it. So this worked out pretty well. So here we have composite copper from Proto Pasta, and all the filaments I ever get really from Proto Pasta come out just excellent. They print so well and the, I mean the bottom layers on this uh, it's just a little bit white because I had glue stick on the uh, bed on the FT5 I just want to be sure this actually really stuck well I mean the overhangs come on focus in on those they just look so good you know it's a little bit separated there but that's kind of to be expected with most filaments but overall it just looks absolutely gorgeous I did have like this little random under extruded spot there I don't know what that was about. Uh, everywhere else on the walls look fine. It's super duper smooth. And on top, this was definitely under extruded just a little bit as well. You can see kind of in here is the main spot where you can see that. So I definitely would have put this up like 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 on the extrusion multiplier. This was put, printed with my PLA settings, which I believe is a 0.87 on the FT5. So I definitely think upping that a little bit would help out. But man, this was great. I definitely want to do a separate video just on finishing this, sanding it down and, and using like a wire brush on it just to really bring out the luster of the copper in this. So this will be a fun future video. Okay, here is the GF30-PP from X-Strand. And you can see here it didn't finish because I had this major failure and then two other failures trying to get to adhere to the bed until I finally went ahead and put on the packing tape. I didn't quite have the eight meters in order to print this. Whereas I guess like 7.7 .7 meters and my coin, yes, my coin is 7.7 .7 meters and the total that comes on these spools is 16 meters. So you have to be really careful on what you print and how much you have. But bottom layer completely covered in this. I probably could take it and sand this all off after a while, but I wasn't want to put the time into that. But this is super duper lightweight. Uh, it's like kind of like a, almost like a carbon fiber type of material. It is super abrasive though, so they tell you to put the hard nozzle in there. And it's a glass filled fiber polypropylene. So I don't know what all that means in the sciencey chemically talk, but it's very lightweight and it's very strong from what I can feel, even though it's not a complete print, that's okay. Walls, really, really nice. Zoom in on that. You know, and again, the bottom layers were really well. And then over the uh, overhangs here, this angle, again, just like the proto pasta, came out really, really great. But this was just a pain to have to actually put packing tape down in order to print on this, which is just weird and kind of annoying. And then we have the best filament out of all of them. This is the ABS PA from Dr. 3D Filament. This came out first try. Uh, I'm super duper impressed with the first layer and the overhangs on this. It's hard to see in the camera just because of its color. It's like more natural color. There is not a single droop on any one of the overhangs on this. The first layer went down beautifully. Support peeled off almost instantly. Some of it was still stuck to the bed. Even when I pulled it off, 
it just did so well over top of the supports, completely filled in, very, very little stringing on it at all. And again, baby smooth print all the way around, no under extrusions anywhere. I had the proper extrusion multiplier set here on the first go with this one. It just overall turned out great. It's really strong, it flexes a little bit, but even though it flexes, it is doggone strong to try and push that out. I'm very amazed with how well this worked out, and this would be super awesome to print you know, some large items and more functional items with. So again, this is a little bit of a tougher box to print with just because it required high temperature. The, which one is it? The GF30PP, I ended up printing this at 255 degrees on the nozzle. Most PTFE uh, tubing will break down at around 230 it starts, but really 250 it really will start to break down and melt. So you're gonna need an all metal hot end for this and you obviously need a hardened nozzle because this is super abrasive unless you just want to print with it and just swap out a new one dollar 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle if that's what you want to do then great i mean literally literally cost a dollar sometimes less so whatever it is that you feel like doing um, but they were very interesting to print with i'm super excited to kind of finish off this copper filament i think that'll make for a fun project slash video i don't know if it's actually going to work for me but I still want to do their some of their other iron filament I have to do just some finishing on that as well. So that'll be a fun little project to do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys want to subscribe to the MakerBox, there's a link down below and I have a coupon code down there. So use the link and the coupon, you get 15% off your first month's box. And for every subscriber that I get, or every three subscribers that subscribe to the MakerBox using my link below, I end up getting a free box. This one was not, it was close, but not enough for that month. And it is accrual, so if it takes me three months to get three subscribers, that next one becomes free. So I appreciate all you guys that wanna you know, try this out. It's a great way to learn new filaments, even if you're not going to buy or use any of other filaments. It's nice to test your machine, to test your own settings, and to test what you know about 3D printing and you know, challenging yourself. All right guys, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. If you guys liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk to me in the comments down below. Either way, I'd love to hear from you what you think about the MakerBox series here on my channel. If you guys want to know what's going on my channel, make sure you become a subscriber. And if you want to get an email notification anytime I upload new content, make sure you hit that bell icon. If you guys want to support me financially, down below there's a Patreon link. You can do that on a monthly basis. Or if you just want to do a one-time donation, you can do that via Streamlabs or buy me a coffee down there. The buy me a coffee I'm using towards buying new lights right now or I might be using it to get a Persa i3 Mark III. We'll see how that ends up going. But right now, it's the new lights that I need. And if you guys want to help me out without even spending your money or just do your daily shopping on various websites, down below there's lots of different affiliate links. Feel free to use those and a little slice of what you buy comes back here to help me out. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, happy printing.